الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ففروا إلى الله إني لكم منه نذير مبين صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى as he created human beings in this world, he always provided human beings with guidance to Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave human beings in darkness that do whatever you feel like doing. If you get it right, you will be rewarded for it. And if you don't get it right, then I will punish you for it. If that would have been the order, still it would be our responsibility to do our best, to do whatever we can in order to do everything right. But in that situation, we won't be sure if we are getting it right or not. But it is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He sent Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam. And through Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, He always provided us with all the information a human being would need to live his life as a believer. Whatever we need, any information that we need, all of that information is available in the teachings of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. Of course, information related to how to live as a believer, as a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this very serious when some kuffar objected about the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And sometimes they even questioned the need of having a prophet. These type of questions are repeatedly mentioned in Quran. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very strongly rejected that idea that there is no need of a prophet or he is not a prophet because we need the prophet of Allah. We need that information from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that can come to us only through Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. So the teachings of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam are extremely important and they are the need of every human being. A lot of times we hear the word need of time. You know, this is the need of our time. And then we work so hard towards fulfilling the needs of the time according to our understanding. This is the need of my home, this is the need of my family, this is the need of the time. And especially if we see people that are growing their beards and wearing long clothes or sisters wearing... Uh, hijab, niqab, we'll say, you know, these people don't know the need of the time. When we hear people saying, you know, just come and sit in the atikaf, sit in the masjid, or do the work of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, they don't know the need of the time. The need of the time that you do these things. You spend five, six hours of your day watching the TV, this is the need of the time. And then, you sit on the internet and put some more hours on it and then you attend all type of gatherings halal and haram don't worry about it because this is the need of the time and really as soon as you walk out of this door and start seeing people and we meet people right away this question will be raised whether it's from Muslims or non-Muslims and especially the media when they would raise this you don't do you know the need of this time do you know what, what is required from you? The real need of the time is people to get the teachings of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam, to learn the teachings of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam, and to follow Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. That's the need of each and every human being, and that's the need of all times. There can't be any need more important than this thing that we need, and that is to learn from Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam, and not only learn few things, learn everything from Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. When the kuffar of Quraysh, 
They saw that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam everything. When people go and stay with him, he teaches them how to pray, okay? To them that is understandable, you teach them how to pray. Now he teaches them how to eat, how to walk, how to laugh, how to joke, how to even, to the extent, how to use the bathroom. So they objected to this. And finally some of them approached one of the Sahaba Radwanullahi alayhi wa jma'een and asked him, لَقَدْ عَلَّمَكُمْ نَبِيُّكُمْ كُلَّ شَيْنَ حَتَّى الْخِرَاءَ Your Prophet teaches you everything, even how to use the bathroom, how to go into the toilet. And the question was asked to Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu, who in return, instead of getting upset with this person, very nicely he answers him and says, yes, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us the manners of using the bathroom also. And then he taught them some of these adab of using the bathroom. The point is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was teaching Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam everything that a human being would need to do in this life. In one of the hadiths, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا أَنَا لَكُمْ كَالْوَالِدِ أُعَلِّمُكُمْ I am to you people just like a father. I teach you everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he mentioned four responsibilities of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Qur'an al-Kareem, one of them is, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches people the book. He teaches people the, how to recite the book, how to benefit from the book. And he teaches them the wisdom, which means through his ahadith. In one of the ahadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ مُعَلِّمًا I have been sent as a teacher. I'm teaching you people. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the responsibility of teaching us, of teaching the ummah. The reason I quoted these ayahs and hadith so we can understand our connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a muallim, if he was a teacher, then what are we? We are the students of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The question is, now we need to judge ourselves of what type of students are we? How much are we learning from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How much time do we take out to learn our deen? To learn what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have told the ummah? To benefit from the knowledge that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have left behind. How much time are we putting for this? In fact, how much do we even care about learning what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the ummah? He says, إِنَّمَا بَعِثْتُ مُعَلِّمًا I have been sent as a teacher. Mu'allim. So that I teach the people, I teach you people everything. There will be two things now that we have to consider in our lives. Number one, what are we de doing with all of this information that is available to us? That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have left behind for his ummah. Are we learning it? How much do we learn it? If we ask a normal person who's considered to be a good Muslim, a person who attends the masajid, a person who is known to have some care for deen, if we ask those people also, that can you tell us how many books have you studied of deen of Islam? Can you tell us the name of some of your teachers that you have learned this deen from? 
I think this will be a very difficult question to answer for many people. And we are not talking about people who don't care about Islam. Talking about people who are considered to be very caring. And they have a lot of worries. And they do worry, they are working very hard. But when it comes to learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's something that we have totally neglected. General information, fara'id of salah, sunnahs of salah, wajibat of salah. Even these simple things normally people have no knowledge about. When I was in Canada, there was a person in our community who used to do a lot of research about Islam. And I don't know if everyone here understands the word research or not. That everything has been searched already, but this person is researching everything. He is not satisfied with what's there. He has to research. So, this person used to research everything about Islam. And sometimes he would come up with an idea. He came to me once and says, You know, I think that these days we don't need to wash our feet in wudu. Well, this was a new research, mashallah. I said, mashallah, very nice. Where did you get this from? Tell us the basic basis of it. He says, you know, in those days, they did not have these type of good roads. There was dirt everywhere. And they did not have the socks and shoes. So their, their feet used to get dirty. And this is why they were told that wash your feet in wudu so that when you go to the masjid, you don't spoil the masjid. The poor man didn't know that you have to wash your feet even if you pray in the desert. But anyway, this type of research he used to come up with. One day he says, you know, I did some good research today. What happened? What's the new research now? So he says, I was really studying this very in a very depth. And I came to conclusion that in, in the Adhan of Fajr, we don't have to say, as salatu khayrun min al-Nawm anymore. Yes, this, is, this has to be some research really. So I asked him, tell us, where did you get this from then? So he says, because, you know in those days, they had old houses, and there were snakes and scorpions and different things and all type of insects everywhere. So Rasulullah gave this order that call us salat khayrun min nom early morning because when these things, these animals are going to wake up and a person is sleeping, they may hurt him. So you better, you better wake up as salat khayrun min nom. But these days, you don't need all of this. You know, there is no fear of something hurting you even if you sleep up to 10 o'clock. So when you wake up, you perform salat al-fajr because Allah didn't make this deen difficult. So he used to come up with these type of research. <coughs> One day, we had some brothers came in Jamaat from overseas. And his way was, if, you, if he sees that there is Jamaat over there, he won't even come to the masjid. But subhanAllah, those brothers, they were very, very nice, humble, and there were some of them very wise in the Jama'at. So, when they learned about that brother, they went to his home and they brought him to the masjid. Now he started giving them his research. <coughs> so one of the old men that was in Jama'at, and he spent good time, he sat with him and he kept on hearing all of his research. So at the end he said, he says to him, Okay, whatever, you know, okay, you perform salat at 10 o'clock or whatever you do, are you sure that you are doing salat correctly? No. So he says, yes, I know that. 
So he says to him, how many things are far than ghusl? The person never did any research on that. So he didn't know the faraid of ghusl. So this old man asked him, he said, did ever ghusl become far than you? He said, I'm sure yes. He said, then you don't even know the faraid of ghusl. So you don't even know if your ghusl was done properly. And if that is correct, then you don't even know if your salah was accepted. What type of Islam do you have? Where you are not even sure about your salah. Forget about the rest of the things. Just this much was enough for that person to realize that everything he was doing was wrong. And he realized it. He understood it. And then he went out with the jamaat. So people have no knowledge about deen. And really we, we have neglected this knowledge of deen totally. And the second thing is, even for those of us who learn it, what are we doing with the knowledge that we have learned? Sometimes people try to stay away from learning because someone have told them, you know, when you learn, then you have the responsibility of practicing it also. So now they come up with this conclusion, it's better not to learn. Because if you learn, then you have added responsibility. Shaitan has all kind of tricks to play. This is just like, and I have seen people, you don't see them in the masjid. Brother, you used to come so regularly, we missed you, we, 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 we don't see you in the masjid anymore. Oh, you know what? I thought I will just pray home, that will be better for me. Why? Because I feel when I come to the masjid, then I'm just coming there to show off. So I just do it in the house, so that I'm not showing off with my salah. Shaitan has all kind of tricks to play with people. He's making him feel that you are becoming more virtuous now. By doing it at home, you are even more virtuous because see, the people in the masjid, they are all just showing off. And you are a real great person. You don't show off with your ibadah, you just do it secretly at your home. And after some time, he won't even do it. And no one will see it, so he doesn't care. Talking about tricks of shaitan, reminds me of the ayah of Surah Yusuf. When the brothers of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, They thought, for us to be good people, virtuous people, we have to be very close to our father. See, he's a great person, he's a prophet of Allah. But the only problem is that Yusuf is closer to him than us. We need to get that status that Yusuf has. So what's the way? We should kill Yusuf. Or throw him somewhere out in the jungle. The result of that would be, Then you will get the full attention of your father. And through that, You will become very virtuous people. So the direction of becoming very virtuous is, Kill your brother. This is how Shaitan plays the tricks. That after killing, and not just killing another person, killing your own brother. And Shaitan says, this is the path of being salihim, of being very virtuous. All of this, because of not having the right knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can a person even think of being of salihin after committing a murder and after committing such a big sin in Islam? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he left us with this deen, he also told us that learning this deen is part on us. At least learning it to the extent that we are able to practice our deen properly and whatever we do, we know that I'm doing it according to the orders of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the scholars of Islam that did their best to make it as simple and as easy for us to learn this deen and acquire the knowledge of deen in the easiest way. They wrote small books, made them very easy and simple to understand in all different languages. They have driven all the rules of the Qur'an and Hadith and then they wrote those books with proofs and then books that will just mention the rules simply. Books for people who know the language, who know the Arabic language, books for those people who cannot even understand the Arabic language. All of these things are there for us. And they all are available. But still, we don't have the time to pick up these books and read them. The people of knowledge are available to us. And most of the time we do things only on the basis of our guesses. Well, I guess this is how it should be. So I can do it. Learning this deen is fun. And whatever we are practicing, whatever we do, whether it's salah, zakah, fasting, hajj, or it is dealing with our families, dealing with our wives, dealing with our children, dealing with relatives, or our businesses that we involved in, all of these things that whatever we do to learn the ahkam of the sharia about these things is fun. And if a person will do anything wrong in these fields of the life, and at the end will present the excuse of not knowing and not having the knowledge, this is not a valid excuse. This is not acceptable because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. But practicing it without knowledge is not an excuse. This tells us that it is must for all of us that we make sure that we learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we take some time out towards learning and give this thing's importance in our life that I would have to learn, I have to learn the deen of Allah. Let the scholars assign some books for us. Or have some classes with scholars, with people of knowledge in every town, community. Alhamdulillah, there are people. Or at least now with all the different means and sources of knowledge that are available, the knowledge is available to us. After all of this, if a person would still neglect learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course there is no excuse for us. Once we learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the second thing, the second responsibility comes on our shoulder is practicing this deen that we have learned. If we look at our lives up to this day, whatever we have learned, whatever we have learned, what is the percentage of that that we are practicing? But again, let me mention this. We should not use this as an excuse for not learning things that we are supposed to learn. Shaitan will trick us. We'll say, you know, you are not even practicing 5% of what you know. So therefore, first thing, practice this and then learn. And I don't know when we would get to that level of knowing that, okay, I know I'm practicing 100% of what I know. Some Sahaba Ridwan Allah had this question. When they heard the ayah of Quran al Kareem, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu alaykum anfusakum, la yadurrukum man dalla idha ahtadaytum. O you who believe, worry about yourself, correct yourself. عَلَيْكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ مَنْ ضَلَّ إِذَا اَحْتَدَيْتُمْ As long as you are on the right track, people who are going astray, they will not hurt you. When they heard this ayah of Qur'an, they thought that this means, we don't have to teach other people the deen, we don't have to do any work of da'wah, we don't have to invite people to Islam, because Allah says, عَلَيْكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ you just worry about yourself.
Thalab Abu Thalab al Khushani radiallahu anhu. He says, I went and I approached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with this question. And I said, Ya Rasulullah, the thing that I understand from this ayah is now that I have to just worry about myself, I don't have to worry about anyone doing any wrong. If someone in my own house, in my family, my children, my wife, or for the wife, her husband and children, or people around us, they're doing anything haram, they can do whatever they want. Don't worry about them. You just keep on doing your own thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, Abu Thalaba, this is not what the ayah means. But it tamiru bil ma'roof, wanhaw anil munkar. No, you should keep on enjoying good and forbidding evil. Keep on telling people of what is good. Keep on teaching people and stop people from doing evils. And this is another topic by itself about Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi Anil Munkar, inshallah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us, we'll talk about it some other day. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, this is your responsibility. Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi Anil Munkar. Both of them are your responsibility. You have to always teach people what is good. And advise people to keep on doing good. This is Amr bin Ma'ruf. Nahi Anil Munkar is also far, which means you see someone doing something wrong, we have to stop the person. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, that is stop people from doing evil. Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yughayyirhu biyadi. Use your hand, which means use your power, use your strength, use your force to stop the person from doing evil. Whatever wrong this person may be doing. Children are watching TV in the home, in the house, and the person says, you know, I can't do nothing about it. <coughs> in fact, nowadays we even use the excuse, you know, if I don't bring it home, then they will go to the neighbor's home to watch it. So I better bring it my home. I think it was Mufti Mahmoud, rahmatullahi alayhi. When someone said the same thing to him, that you know, if we don't bring it at home, then children go to the neighbor's home and then they watch TV and then, you know, they get even spoiled even more. So this is why I thought, you know, the best thing is I just bring it home so I know what they're doing. So he says to that person, God forbid, if tomorrow your children will start going to the club, and they're associating with girls over there, are you going to bring all of those into your house that, okay, let me keep all of this in the house for them? Because they do it outside anyway. But this is a normal excuse. That, you know, they would do it outside anyway, let's bring it at home. And then we open the doors of all the fawahish and munkarat and all the evils in our homes. And not only with this, with a lot of things, with a lot of things, we find this is an excuse to open the doors of haram into a house, bring the haram into the house. And then, at the end, the person will say, you know, what can we do? There is nothing that we can do. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ Use your force as much as you can. Use your force to change the munkar, to change the evil. They don't wake up for Salat and Fajr. We said, let them sleep, you know, what can I do? I knocked at this door a couple of times. That said, you know, I can't do anything more. They are grown up. Once I was asked this question, that, you know, what can we do? Children are grown up, we wake them up and they don't wake up. So I said to him, I said to that person who was asking the question, that if they would do the same thing at the time of going to the college, that they don't want to go to the college. They don't want to attend their class. And they're sleeping and you knock at their door and then after a few days you say, you know, he doesn't wake up. You say, you know, because he, ah, what can you do? He's grown up. And if he doesn't want to study, then let him sleep. Are you going to do the same thing? Of course not. Now we will go to the imam. You know, is there any ta'weez that he will go to those? He, he can, I can send him to, to the university or to the college. 
and the whole family will sit with him and the mother is crying and fa father is crying and they are calling uncles and aunts and everyone is surrounding this person, you know. But the person is missing salah after salah. What can we do? He's grown up and he doesn't do it. What can we do? I told him so many times. مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ A person who sees an evil should change it with his force. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ If a person does not have the power, look at the word, فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ There is no istita'ah, there is no power. He cannot use his power, his hand. Now he can go to the second option and that is فَبِلِسَانِهِ He should at least use his tongue, Telling them this is haram, this is not acceptable, I will not accept this. Fabilisan. Fa'illam yastata. The poor man is so weak and his position is such that he cannot even say anything. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Fabi qalbi, at least disliking it. Change it with your heart, which means disliking it. But the situation, if we look at it, it goes even beyond this now. And that is, when we see the munka, we see the evil is taking place. The person is just sitting there. They are laughing, he's laughing with them. They are enjoying it, he's enjoying it. You tell the person, what, what's happening? You know, what can I do? I can't, uh, I told them and they don't listen. Is this is he feels that I I use my tongue. He did not even use his heart yet. If he disliked it, say these people were cursing at his father, these people were cursing at his mother, and he cannot use his hand, he can't even use his tongue. Do you think he will sit like this the way he's sitting there? At least he will leave the gathering, he will get up and go away. This is Fabiqalbi. He's changing it with his heart. I can't say nothing, I can't do nothing. At least I dislike it. They can see me, I'm turning away from them. They don't they see that I don't have no smile, they don't see a smile on my face. So with this they understand that I don't like this thing. I'm not going to accept these things. Although I didn't say anything and I couldn't say it, but they know that I will never accept it. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَذَٰلِكَ أَضْعَفُ iman." This is the weakest iman when a person is just changing it with his heart and he's not able to use his tongue and his, his, his hands. So Abu Sa'id ibn Khushani radiyallahu anhu says, I said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, after reading this ayah, it seems to me, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we just have to worry about ourselves, we don't have to worry about anything else. Let people do munkar, evils, whether they're in our home, they're our neighbors, our children, anyone can do anything, don't worry about it. Just worry about yourself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no. بَلْ اِتَّمِرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهَوْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ No, you should always enjoy it well and always forbid evil. That's fariha. حَتَّى إِذَا رَأَيْتْ شُحًا مُطَاعًا Yes, when you see that now people are just following their greed. And they are obeying their desires. And everyone is just satisfied with his own opinion. When you see these three things, then just worry about yourself. He mentioned three things. شُحًا مُطَعًا وَهَوًا مُتَّبَعًا وَإِعْجَابَ كُلَّ ذِي رَأْيٍ بِرَأْيٍ That people are just following their greed. They are not working for their need. They are working for their greed. Every person is greedy. And all they want is just more and more of this dunya. They are not learning, they are not working to fulfill their needs. Their whole life is just trying to increase their asset. Shuhan mutaha. Wahawan muttaba. And people are just running after their desires. Subhanallah. 
The wording of the hadith is something that if you try to imagine the message of this hadith and put it into practical life in those lives during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if you look at the kuffar, how much were they following their greed and their desires? But today, you can really see what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying. Early morning, you see the rush hour. Where everyone is going. And people are in the traffic for hours. If people will have to wait at the door of the masjid to enter the masjid for five minutes, if they will have to wait, next time I'm not coming to this masjid. But in the rush hour, every day, the person is standing there for a couple of hours. He's sitting in that rush, in the, tra in the traffic. That's fine, you know, as long as I can make it to my job. And then, how our evenings are spent, how our weekends are spent, what are our plans for the holidays? You know, how and muttaba'a, it's nothing but following desires. This is all what people are looking for. The whole world, is, this is all what everyone is running after. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with iman. And with this we get the salawat, the prayers. At least a person would think, I have to do my salah. So we think about Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without a salah, just imagine life being without salah. What this person is doing from morning to evening? Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. What this person is just thinking about, what his plans are, what is he trying to do with his life? Nothing, nothing but to fulfill his desires. There is no rub that he remembers. Subhanallah, such a great na'mah of salah. You know, we look at our lives. We, we have given most of the things away. It's alhamdulillah salah that brings us back. Then at least I have to think, you know, I have to, let me wash myself, let me do my salah. So we think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of where the person is, we'll think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's time for my salah. But if the salah was not in the life, and as we see in our day, even the salah is not there. There is no ibadah, there is no connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the whole life is nothing but thinking about dunya. Following the greed and just satisfying the desires. That's the whole life. And the third thing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَعِجَابَ كُلَّ ذِي رَأْيٍ بِرَأْيٍ Every person is very proud of his opinion. I have given, this is my opinion and everyone just should follow it. Opinions are becoming more important than even the ayahs of the Qur'an. I said it. We see people not following the ahkam of Sharia, we don't get upset. But they did not follow my opinion. I'm not going to tell them anything after this. You know the very same person, he doesn't even care about Sharia. And we, don't, we didn't worry about it. That, didn't never, that never bothered us. But how come you didn't follow my opinion? What does this mean? Here, this is something more important I'm giving you than anything else. I'm telling you my opinion. And you don't want to follow this either? Okay, you didn't follow Quran, you didn't follow Hadith, but not even my opinion? This is really the situation. And if a person would give his opinion is not followed, subhanAllah, that will be the biggest problem in the world. وَعِجَابَ كُلَّ ذِي رَأْيٍ بِرَأْيٍ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you see these three things, this become the general atmosphere, this become the normal habit of people, this is what people would live for, this is how people will behave with each other, اِعْجَابَ كُلَّ ذِي رَأْيٍ بِرَأْيٍ then فَعَلَيْكَ بِخَاسَةِ نَفْسِكَ Yes, at that time, then worry about yourself. At that time, then make sure that you stick to the deen. Because the situation will be such that it will be difficult for you, yourself, to just hold to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, that that will be the time, the time will come when al-qabid fihim ala deenih kal-qabid ala jamrah.
Holding to the deen will be just like holding to the flame of fire. This is how difficult it would be. But alhamdulillah, we are not in that situation yet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very easy for us at this time. But still alhamdulillah, there is a lot of hope. And alhamdulillah, we see people around us that are trying to follow the deen. We see people around us that if you talk to them, they will listen, they will understand. This is not that time yet. So learning, teaching, and advising each other, and making sure that we fulfill these requirements of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we teach each other, we learn from each other, we spend some time, we make sure that now it's part of our daily schedule that we learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know who our teachers are in Islam. We know who, which books of deen are that are reliable sources of, our, uh, of, of, of deen. That if we need any knowledge, I can go to these books. Yes, I have asked the scholars, they have suggested this book, and I can follow this book. Many times we don't even know what to follow. And the person sits on the internet and then tries to find information from here and there. And after some time, you see this person talking totally kufr wa ayazu billah. He got all of his aqaid from there. He got all of his deen from there. And he doesn't know who his teachers are. Someone posted something over there, he got it from. We don't know who our teachers are. We don't know who are the reliable, so what are the reliable sources of deen. We don't know who were the scholars of Islam, who were the reliable people of deen in the past. Total, we have totally disconnected ourselves from the deen. And it's coming up as sometime I really say to people, when uh, we talk to people around us and friends, that it looks like we are the first Muslims in the world. This is how we are behaving. As if we are the first Muslims in the world. And there was no Islam in the past. We have totally disconnected ourselves from all of those sources. And someone will mention a name to us, one of the scholars of Islam, Hafiz ibn Hajar. So what? Who was that? So we need to connect ourselves. We need to reconnect ourselves to this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't need a research. We need to reconnect ourselves to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through this connection, inshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us. And we will learn the true deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will be able to at least know what are the reliable sources of our deen and always keep ourselves connected to that and always get our information from these reliable sources of our deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to salat al-mustaqeem. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa lisa'ilu muslimin wa muslimat. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi wa